I am going to rebuild an FOA shock coilover shock absorber remote reservoir. When you have it off, first and most importantly, take something, depressurize the Schrader valve. While I'm in there, I'm just going to take it out because you're going to need it out anyway. If you don't have a clean surface, you have to improvise. I don't. Everything I own is a shelf. I have to lay down my favorite beach towel, stack stuff up. Um, first part of getting the, getting the cap off, you have the small little Allen wrench. That's the set screw. Pop that, just loosen it up. All it does is hold tension to keep the thing tight. Nice thing about an FOA, does not use any sort of special cap that you need a spanner wrench. Good old pair of soft channel locks because these are not tight. These are just an O-ring seal. Screw them off, screw it off. Uh, the next thing you're going to do, I, I happen to buy the full rebuild kit uh, just because all my some of my parts were bad. I already knew this. Um, some of the they go in there, and there is a small snap ring that sits right here into the shock valve body. So what you have to do is you have to just push this down and then dig in there with the snap ring. All right, not pressing down. Other thing I noticed, guess what? That's still pressurized. There's no Schrader in it. That means something's gone in past the, the IFP. We have nitrogen in this charge instead of being on this side because there's a piston in here. So we're going to try to take it off the reservoir. This is going to be awesome because there's obviously still an oil charge in there. So it's going to make a nice big mess. My favorite part. The squirt. All right. It pushes in. Made an awesome mess. Clean up your shock oil. Pop your snap ring. Might as well start making a stack of how everything went in. Pull your piston out. This is normally when the big mess comes up and it waterfalls on top of you. We didn't have that problem because it waterfalled all out the reservoir. So now everything comes out, lay it out. Look at your shaft, make sure there's no dings and pits. I got a good pit. It's not the end of my world. You have your wear band. You can go ahead and look at this one. These pretty much last for a really long time, unless they're cracked. They're fine. On the actual shock shaft, you have your rebound dampening, piston, compression dampening, seal cap with wiper, then your two O-ring seals. These are the most common ones that go bad. Um, I'm actually just going to replace it all. But before I take that off, I'm going to get the rest of the oil out of my shaft. Pull the valve stem shack apart. top nut, your spacers, and like I said, keep some of these organized. These are your valve stacks. These are a super simple simple, super simple pyramid stack. Um, you're looking for these. You're looking to make sure they're not bent or cracked. If they're not bent or cracked, you reuse them. If you're going to change your valving, now's your time to change it. Then you have the piston. FOA actually went through a few different piston designs. Uh, here is, this is your normal piston that FOA supplies. They also have what they call an even flow piston. That happens to be what I have. As you can see, it's got both sides, and the one side has the bypass holes. I put the bypass, I put the compression valve against the bypass hole. Then there is also another piston.
that I can't find. But there's another piston that doesn't have bypass holes, that's for bypass shocks. All right, further taking apart these more. You have the spacer, which seems to be good and stuck on. Now I'm actually gonna just, I'm not reusing these, I bought new ones, but when you look at them, most common things I, see, I seem to see are these O-rings get pinched or cracked. There's a small O-ring on the inside that seems to get forgotten about. It's very funny how, I'm sure the camera won't pick this stuff up, but you can see the groove in there. The shock that I came apart with, no O-ring in there. The new one has an O-ring. Production changes, different things happen. I normally save a lot of these parts. This one, nice and damaged, especially now. I will rip off the O-rings and save the O-rings. You never know. I put them in a different bin. I know they're used O-rings. That way, they're the worst comes to worst case. They might be better than what you have. All right, to get your top piece out where the Schrader cap is, same thing, push it down. Pop your clip out. I use a little bit of the serrator valve's gone. I use a little bit of compressed air with a rubber nozzle. right out nice and violently here you have another o-ring inside the reservoir you have the IFP they have a little quarter inch 20 thread on one side necessity's mother of invention I have a piece of all thread with the bolt welded to it I'm sure there's fancy T handles for this not in my garage. All right, IFP out. What we're gonna look for on that one is because since I had the pressure in the reservoir, I'm gonna see what, I, what was actually bad in it. You have these little wear bands on the IFP. I'm not seeing any cut o-ring. little bit of trash on it <sighs> could have been the problem all right I'll start reassembling my cap put a little lube on it some people just use normal shock oil I use pool o-ring lubricant it's nothing more than a heavy Vaseline really should probably take off your old seal cap that's fine that goes in the spares Same thing, a little more lube on the inside there. You're trying, you don't want that O-ring to get cut or nicked as it goes across the surface. It'll roll too, that'll also cause your leaks. Put 
spacer back on. Also going to go through the valve stack here, double check what I have. Uh, FOA is nice enough, they have all their valving specs on what they use. And what they use, I say, when you take it apart, you might as well go ahead and verify it is what you ordered. Also looks, make sure you know what's in there, it makes it lets you look at each valve stack. Put your top spacer back on. I put a little dab of Loctite on them. You never know, they're just a simple nylock nut. But a little bit of Loctite. He's torqued down. 30 foot pounds. Grab the wear band. My wear band was fine. Like I said, unless these things are cracks, they're pretty much always okay. Don't actually need it yet. I'll go back in here. that mostly clean grab our piston it was cleaned little o-ring lube Slide our new O-rings on. Little O-ring lube on the outside. I'm just gonna take a peek down the coil over. Make sure. Everything's good in there. No trash, no scratches. Put my piston back in. And you remember, there's only one way to get it in and out, so it only goes in one way. No reason to install the wiper cap yet because you have to set your IFP, but it's going to move on you. Um, on a reservoir shock, your IFP is 8 inches from the top of the lip. Um, I end up pushing them down a lot, so I just have a hardened drill bit here. And I marked it just because I've done this a few times. Push my IFP down to 8 inches. You're going to recheck that later, but there it is now. Add shock oil. Stop adding shock oil. As you remember, I had to loosen up mine. Tighten this back up.
put my shock oil in. You have to, same thing with any hydraulic system, you're going to have to bleed it. I shake my reservoirs, make sure I get out any air bubbles. Let that sit for a while. You don't want to fill it at this moment all the way full. I'm just trying to let gravity win. You can hear it. All right, stop bubbling for a minute. I'm about right here. That's probably good, maybe a little more. Shake and move it. Apparently, I see people that beat these things with soft hammers. All you're trying to do is get the air out. I'm going to put the piston back in. No air band. Um, I'm just using it to kind of go up and down and bleed. All right, after I've plunged it a few times, I've bled some oil out of it, bled all the air out of it, I mean. Check your IFP. That's going to move on you. Still at eight inches. Now I want the oil about two inches from the top. Lube up all my O-rings again. my wear band on you're just trying to get this in here far enough get your piston in so you can get your seal cap in that down put your clip in got to make sure the clip is completely seated this is what's going to pop out and leak we'll double check my IFP see how far that moved Again, people use tape measures. A stick with a mark on it is just quicker for me. My IFP is set correctly. I need to put in my end cap. Give it a good clean, look it over, everything's good, a few drops of oat, lube on the inside, new o-ring, a little bit of lube on the outside, in normally give it a few give it a few taps in you can see your o-ring groove or I'm sorry your snap ring groove put 
my snap ring back in again. Make sure you got it in all the seats. I'll drive everything home with a little shot of air that's going to seat this piston and seat this top cap. gonna die. You can thread that in. And all you have to do is add nitrogen, clean it back up, put it on the shop, put it back on the truck.